You know, I've got to be honest. Um, the last few weeks, it just feels like there's been wave, starting with Sonia. I, I have to be honest, there's been wave after wave after wave of, of some bad reports in our family. And uh, not just Wayman's passing, but some very serious and critical things. And it wears and it gets heavy and you pray. And I know of health needs throughout the congregation today. But I think the Lord is, not I think, I know the Lord is telling us today that we just have to trust. And I left my message on the chair over there. I just want to talk to you for a moment. I want to exhort you. I sit there thinking, how can we get a hold of this sweet spot, this place we call trust or, or peace? You, you can just sit down if you want to. I won't be long, Randy, so you can just hang with me for a minute. But this sweet spot we call peace or trust, to, to have trust and peace when when you're going through what James is going through or, or Deb or, or, or anybody that's going through some heavy things, how, how do we find that? I've, I've settled the faith thing and I'd have to believe that everybody in this room has settled the faith thing. Faith says he is. I, I, I'd have to believe that if we've got the faith thing settled, most of us here have the faith thing, thing settled, but the hope thing kind of trailers that and that's not so difficult as I said earlier but that trust thing sometimes is pretty difficult and I think God is wanting to get us all to another level where we, we can trust the Lord in the middle of our tough circumstances and trusting the Lord when things don't seem to be going so well because you know life is like that life can be really going good and, and all of a sudden it's not and it's when it's not that not only is our faith and hope tested, but wow, our trust is really tested. There's a passage of scripture I've, I've actually preached from it years ago, and it so is embedded in my mind because it helped me through a tough time. It's been many years ago I preached it here. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, verses 4 through 7. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Whew. Anxiety is the opposite of trust. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, mingled together with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And here's the promise. The God of peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and keep your mind through Christ Jesus. He tells us to think of some positive things, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are just. There's a whole list there. I didn't get it in the right order. But if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So how do I find that sweet spot today? That place where I can rest, that place where I can trust, that place that I can know that God is with me in spite of what doctors are saying or in spite of a life that we've lost, in spite of anything that comes my way, how can I find that sweet place of rest and trust? The Apostle Paul found it when he was beaten brutally falsely accused and thrown in prison. We find him sitting there in chains and shackles. And we find him writing the most positive book in all of Scripture. And it's there with his legs and shackles and his finds himself chained up that he pens these words, Rejoice in the Lord always. Think about that. Lonely, a cold, damp dungeon. Nobody but that there to pat you on the back and say, hey man, you can make it. There's no music playing in the background. There's no choir to sing. Just raw, real life. And it's there 
We hear him say, rejoice in the Lord. You know, there's a real secret to all of that. You know, whether you feel like it or not, sometimes you've just got to reach down and rejoice. You, you didn't get that. Because a lot of you, your rejoicing is determined by how you feel. Your rejoicing is determined by how good things are going on around you. You're rejoicing based on your circumstances, but he says, rejoice in the Lord when? Always. 100% of the time. Here, here's another raw way to put it. Whether you're going through hell or whether you're not going through hell, you still have to find a way to rejoice in the Lord. You see, rejoice is not, has nothing to do with feeling. Rejoicing means to rejoice. It literally means to joy, to, to make a choice that I'm going to joy. Well, how do I joy? I joy because I stand on the promises of God. In that same book, Paul writes this, I can do all things through Christ whom strengthens me. In that same book, he writes, <laughs> he writes, but my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We can hold on to Psalm 23, 1, which says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We can believe the scripture when John says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We can hold on to the scripture when it says that we are more than overcomers through Christ Jesus. We can seize his promises and choose to joy and rejoice in spite of our circumstances. Now, can we do a little bit of that right now and just put our hands together and joy in the Lord? We joy in you. We joy in you. As hard as this may seem, and it might even seem to some inappropriate, but I would say to Jason and Jen, rejoice. Paula, rejoice. Ron, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Let's keep rejoicing. Let's rejoice in the Lord regardless of what's going on. We lift our hands regardless of what's going on. We speak praises unto him because it does not change who he is. We rejoice. And he says release anxiety. You know, if you've got anxiety, it's because you don't trust the Lord. It's hard to say, but it's true because those times that I've found anxiety in my life, it's because I just choose not to trust. And I begin to recognize my own limitations when I lose sight of how great he is. And when I'm not rejoicing and I'm feeling anxiety, I lose sight of how great he is because that's the value of rejoicing. You keep reminding yourself of how great God is. That's why you're rejoicing, right? Right? And then anxiety wants to settle in. That's a trap from the enemy. We get anxious and we start making bad decisions. We start saying things we shouldn't say. We start doing things we shouldn't do because we're anxious and we feel like God has left us and we forgot who he really is. I come against anxiousness and anxiety in the name of Jesus. Drive it out, Father. Drive it out of every life that's here. Those that are worried about their finances, push it out in the name of Jesus. Those that are carrying anxiety, worried about tomorrow, push it out in the name of Jesus. We come against it. Anxiousness will destroy you. Anxiousness will cause you to do things you shouldn't do. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. You say, Pastor, I can't live by that. Oh, yes, you can, because these are choices. These are choices we have to make. And finally, finally, there's a promise. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Have you ever been there where you had to hold on to that? I see some, I, I don't even start naming names because I look around, I see the loss of spouses. I see people who have been through some tough times, but you know what, you're still standing or you're still sitting here, you're still here. You know why? Because there's a trust factor. There's something that sustains us and it's his presence, amen?